Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, my name is Melissa McMahon. I am the one on the right. I am the Youth Protection Specialist. I joined Kiwanis International in January. And prior to um, that, I worked for State of Indiana government, uh, local government. Uh, I worked for the uh, Department of Child Services, the Health Department, Family and Social Service Administration, and I have a background in also in criminal justice and uh, victim services. And then uh, you can also see a picture of Miss um, Michelle Studi Campbell, who is the executive director of our Kwana Youth Programs. And you might recognize Michelle was actually the director of uh, Youth Protection last year, and then she was promoted to Youth Programs. So she helps me out quite a bit as I um, am learning and am presenting a lot of information related to youth protection. So I welcome you all here today. Why does youth protection matter? Kiwanis International, our youth programs, we serve over 335,000 youth. That's a lot of students from all our different program lines, from our, key, from our K kids, to Builders Club, to, um, to Key Club. And globally, one in four youth will suffer some type of abuse. This is a statistic from the World Health Organization. And 85% of the child abuse victims never report their abuse. And sometimes more than 90%, that's more than sometimes, more than 90% of abusers are people that children know, love, and trust. And we know that abusers often take advantage of um, privacy and, um, and space that they may groom their, um, their youth over time. Um, abuse, 85% um, of child abuse victims never report. And we also know that um, the suicide is the second leading cause of death of children and adolescents in the US. And a suicide is the second leading cause of death in age 15 to 29 year olds in the, in globally. And some of those risk factors are exposure to violence, impulsivity, aggression, disruptive behavior, access to firearms, bullying, feelings of hopelessness or helplessness, um, acute loss or rejection. And, and why does this matter as you as a Kiwanis advisor or a Kiwanis um, faculty advisor. Um, I'm sure that many of the faculty staff have um, already received trainings related to um, mental health, um, but one of the things that um, unfortunately when there are um, a possible risk of suicide, uh, there's also, um, there could be due to um, abuse. There's been trends um, related to that. So. Youth protection compliance. What is youth protection? So the main goals that Kiwanis Youth Protection um, we've established is to protect youth members from predators. Um, we also want to empower and educate all our adult members with best practices when working with youth. And we also want to provide youth with positive skill development tools um, designed to inspire and engage our future leaders um, to be their best. Our, also, our goal is that we have 100% compliance for throughout all of our youth programs. And when we talk about compliance, we are talking about um, meeting those requirements that are in our policies and procedures. And I'm going to talk about those in detail a little bit more. Um, but here's some statistics um, that we put together uh, for the, as of June 15th. So um, they are related to Kiwanis advisors, so this does not include um, all the faculty advisors who have background checks, but the Kiwanis um, advisors who have background checks. Um, so currently there are um, approximately, or there are 8,852 um, service leadership programs. And so I may say the word SLP today, and just as a reference, that is service leadership program. So that includes um, 
Key Club, CKI, Builders Club, it includes all of the program lines um, when I mentioned SLPs. So Kiwana sponsored, um, so that would be like a Kiwana's Club sponsors an SLP. There are 94% um, uh, of our, all the SLPs are sponsored by a Kiwana's Club. We also, um, Kiwana's Advisors on Record, we have 78% of advisors, so that number is 6,913. We have on a Quantas advisors on record, and of those, we have 5,000 background checked. So we have about 73 um, percent of our uh, advisors that have background check, and our goal, like I just said, was 100 percent. So we have 100 percent that we'd like to um, have all our advisors. Um, it's a requirement, and so we're pushing for that. Uh, this slide. Um, it's a little hard to see. I uh, apologize for that. I tried to get all of the uh, the North American Service Leadership Clubs uh, districts listed on here. Um, so this basically, the statistics that I just showed, this breaks it down by district. Um, and then I have the next slide is by Key Club. So you can see that we have um, in the middle, um, we have SLP clubs with an advisor background checked, and you can see what the district breakdown is. Um, and this is numbers that I actually provide to the Kiwana's Youth Protection Managers at the district level on a quarterly basis. And then um, these numbers are the key club districts um, that are broken down and very similar. So um, out of the 73% that I said um, of all SLPs, we have about 69% of the key club advisors. And again, these are key club Kiwana sponsored advisors um, have background checks. And our goal is to have 100%. Youth protection ABCs. We've broken our, um, our youth protection program down into ABCs. A is for accessible training. B is for background checks and C is for culture of care. And I will be talking about a little bit of each of these. But here is a screenshot of the newest version of our youth protection policies and procedures. And this includes updates that were approved by the Board of Trustees in October 2019 and also February of 2020. So this two-page document can be found on our Kiwanis.org youth protection um, website. Every Kiwanis district is expected to provide an educational forum or workshop at every district um, produced convention or conference regarding these guidelines and best practices for working with youth. I also want to say that um, in the next few slides, we're going to be talking about some of the different areas that are covered um, within the policies and procedures, but this is not, this presentation is not fully comprehensive of all the different things. So I encourage all of you to go in um, to our website and download this and share with, um, with your, your local club and your other advisors that you're working with. Um, another aspect of training. So while we might have district training talking about our um, our youth protection policies and procedures. Um, after months of preparation to meet Kwana's unique youth protection training needs, um, we partnered with uh, Presidium and the training site went live in February of 2020. And we set up administrators and club advisors um, to automatically receive their login credentials so that they can complete um, designated trainings. So as you can see to the right, there are, um, it's just basically a screenshot of the Presidium portal. Um, and if you're asking who is Presidium Inc., um, they are actually a um, training provider and also um, a model organization for the last 25 years doing research in child abuse prevention, um, sexual, uh, child and sexual abuse prevention and intervention and have different models. And so, we actually um, had a contract with them um, a year ago and they actually came in and talked with our youth protection staff and did an assessment of our youth protection practices and policies and procedures. And based on some of their recommendations, 
um, to strengthen and enhance our policies and procedures, we've made some changes. Um, and this new training, um, very high quality videos that as a Kiwanis advisor, you can click on. And so there are actually advisor trainings. They're maybe 15, 20 minutes long that you can click on. And once you complete the training, it's good for two years and it automatically, um, uh, your compliance or your completion information is, um, is immediately reported to um, our Kiwanis reporting so I can track and monitor how many people have um, completed that. Um, looks like, um, sorry, Linda, that you can uh, check the recording. Sorry that you're gonna miss us. Um, also for chaperones, so service leadership adult chaperones are now required to complete a chaperone training through our youth protection um, through this module. And if you have, um, for example, going to your planning your decon for um, next March uh, for your key club decon and you have chaperones and you want to get them access to the youth protection um, training, you can contact our, um, our youth protection email, which is I'll give you at the end of the slide deck, and we can get them set up manually, enter in any of your chaperones um, who are going to be um, chaperoning an overnight um, event, like, the, like a decon uh, convention. So as a Kiwanis advisor, so here's a little FAQ, I didn't receive the email from Presidium. What are you talking about? I don't have my login information. What should I do? I don't understand about Presidium. So um, again, these slides will be um, shared. I'm happy to share these afterwards. And also I'm sure this uh, presentation will be recorded um, so that you can have access to this. But you can contact Presidium directly if you are a um, Kiwanis member who is an advisor or a district administrator, you can contact Presidium either through email or their 1-800 number, or you can contact me at youthprotectionatkiwanis.org and we can resend your information, um, your login information. And it's just a simple Presidium website, um, logging in and then you click the videos to watch. Um, the one thing about the videos I will say um, that they are focused on child abuse prevention and uh, social media safety of the students. So whereas our Kiwanis policies and procedures are related to um, how you handle transportation or social media um, within your uh, Kiwanis club, um, these are more related to um, looking out for um, possible signs of predators or if you see different behavior changes in the students um, that you're working with and you're curious about wonder why um, they may be showing signs that they've been abused. Um, those are the type of training topics. And if you are in a faculty advisor and you would like to take this training, um, you can also email uh, Youth Protection at Kiwanis and I can manually um, get you set up. And yes, if you are a teacher advisor um, saying, I don't know if you should be here or not, um, I would say yes, it is good to know um, that uh, some of the new policies and procedures that um, I'm gonna talk about in a few minutes. Uh, so Kiwanis Youth Protection Policies and Procedures Related to Social Media Best Practices. Um, so the best bet when connect is to connect um, via a club page or account um, with students and not um, individual youth members accounts. Um, so we, we say to never initiate following, friending, liking. Um, I have a, a couple of icons related to a couple different social media platforms, um, but for youth protection purposes and not only for you as the advisor, but also the student, um, keeping that separation and that professional relationship um, so that there is, you know, tr you're treating all of your social posts and interactions as public facing. Um, also, part of our best practices is not posting pictures of youth on your personal social media page. 
um, use that club page, that, that local key club page, um, as long as the, the students have signed their uh, photo permission and photo um, waiver. And I see a question, do we still use safe hiring solutions? Yes, we do. Um, will this replace the requirement for a background check? No, so that's a good, um, good thing. So the Presidium trainings, or trainings, it's a 15 minute talking about how you um, as an adult can look for the warning signs for child abuse. Um, safe hiring solutions, and I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit, a minute are background checks, and that is a screening tool that we use. Um, another uh, best practice is using the rule of three. Always include um, parent or guardian or another adult and not engaging in one-on-one uh, -on -one communication with the youth. So here's a scenario. Um, so Pat is a new college grad and a former key club youth leader. Uh, Pat is a member of the local Kiwanis Club and will be a key club advisor. Pat is also a communications and marketing professor, a professional. Pat is very enthusiastic about the new role. Pat friends the faculty and students in the club on Facebook. Pat posts photos of the first meeting on Facebook and Instagram, and even creates a new key club Snapchat filter. What do you do? So based on this scenario, if you could just type in the chat box so that I can see, and what would you think? What would you do? You could type in, what would you do in this scenario? Okay. So it all depends. If Pat has the appropriate permissions and waivers from the school and the guardians to post and is using the club page, then it's okay. But if it's on, on their own page, then it's not okay. Like I said, the personal page. So policies and procedures related to transportation best practices, and many of you, um, <laughs> um, many of you already know this, but this is in our policies that at least three people in the car. Um, so again, safety for the student, safety for um, the adult advisor, um, students right in the back seat, um, approval needs to be um, given from uh, parents and guardians. It's also follow local school and local law policies, driving, seatbelt, that kind of thing. Um, another uh, tip that we like to remind people, um, so say that there are two people or three people in a car and you drop someone off, um, making a log like this is when I dropped off the student, this is when I picked up the student, you know, whether it's a middle note, a note in your phone, so that if there's ever any question about a student being alone with an advisor in a car or in an uncomfortable situation that you have a log um, or that you have some kind of notes that you can um, refer back to. Um, medication. So possession of prescription and non-prescription medications should only be allowed with written permission from a parent or guardian. So we know that when um, students go to overnight decons or overnight international conventions, they may need to have their EpiPen or they may need to have certain medications. Um, we ask that, uh, that there should be written permission from the parent. Reporting guidelines. Um, if a Kiwanian observes troubling behavior involving a youth at a Kiwanis event or becomes aware of a situation, that is illegal or potentially unsafe for a young person um, at the Kiwanis event, the Kiwanian must immediately uh, contact the appropriate personnel on site, provide notification of law enforcement personnel as appropriate. If the Kiwanian becomes aware of troubling behavior after the event, then they must contact the leaders of the event and provide notification to law enforcement personnel as appropriate. Um, all local, state, and provincial and federal laws regard regarding reporting must be followed. Uh, Kwan has entered into a contract with Presidium to create our first youth protection helpline. 
So when it comes to reporting, um, so not only um, are Kiwanians supposed to, as an adult advisor, you know, report to the leaders, but if there happens to be um, something that um, the students don't feel comfortable reporting right away, and they want to report something anonymously, they can call this one six this one eight six 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 zero seven safe number, and it is staffed twenty four seven, uh, so twenty four hours seven days a week by trained professionals, and Kiwana's um, service leadership and adult members can report inappropriate behavior or abuse or policy violations. Um, it is anonymous. Um, however, once we do the investigating and we will, it'll be um, directed to our youth protection team, we may um, follow up with the, um, the key club uh, ad advisor, the school administrators, you know, what are the, um, the, pro the policies for that particular school, depending on what was reported. So we do have this new helpline. I want to share that with you. Um, uh, here is um, uh, a scenario. So um, you have a big overnight trip with multiple key club chapters. There's 35 students, 19 female and 16 male are staying overnight on this great trip. Three days before the trip, you learn that in the past year, one of the students, Al, now uh, Alice identifies as female. What do you do? Um, room assignments, uh, chaperones. So the guidelines for student accommodations at events. So when planning events, and especially those with overnight lodging, Kiwanis organizations should make reasonable accommodations for the unique needs of each student participant. If the standard situation for an overnight event is shared rooms by gender, students must be allowed to access housing consistent with their self-determined gender identity. However, a student shall be assigned a room by biological sex if the student or parent or legal guardian so request. A student or parent or legal guardian may suggest an alternative sleeping arrangement, such a single occupancy room, um, which should be honored whenever possible. Um, however, students cannot be required to stay in single occupancy accommodations, nor should those arrangements be made without the consent of the student or parent or legal guardian. Um, B, roommate disagreements should be addressed and resolved with the best interests of all parties in mind. If a disagreement cannot be um, reconciled, no student should be forced to reside with another student. Um, and C, all students must be allowed to access restroom facilities consistent with their self-determined gender identity. Event organizers should choose facilities that can be adapted to accommodate these requests in accordance with the guidelines. If a facility is unwilling to accept the guidelines for any reason, then a different location should be considered. Um, volunteers on, have an obligation to maintain student privacy and cannot disclose or require disclosure of a, a student's sexual orientation, transgender, or gender nonconforming identity. Um, biological sex, religion, disability, medical condition, or other personal information to anyone, including other students, um, without the consent of the student. So real quick, before I move on to background checks, I have a couple um, questions. So for the car scenario, there is just one student in the vehicle with the adult after the others have been dropped off. I recall guidance about having the student call home and leave the phone line open. That is a, um, a really great best practice. Um, and I would definitely say, as I said, keeping a track of when the student was dropped off. That's also um, another good best practice. Um, I have Diana's question. Is there a rule of male-female ratio when transporting students? Um, we do have a rule related to overnight accommodations. Um, I currently, um, we have the rule of three in the um, 
but not for transporting, um, not for transporting students. Um, let's see, any other questions? Hi. Can you, Mich uh, Michelle is joining us. Can you, can you talk, Michelle, or not? Yeah, no, I just got the permissions. I've been kind of waiting here, and it seems like questions are coming in now, so I'm glad I could jump, jump in. So just keep, keep going and let me know when you might need me. Okay, sounds good. So talking about background checks and beyond. So why background checks? Through our research, we know that background checks can be used as a screening tool to identify members, adults, potential predators who have a history of violence or child abuse. Um, in our policies, all SLP Kiwanis advisors must have a Kiwanis cleared background check, and that is with Safe Hiring Solutions, our vendor. So while Kiwanis is a global organization, we realize that background checks and the mechanics of those checks vary greatly from country to country. And so Kiwanis has partnered with Safe Visitor, Safe Hiring Solutions to conduct searches. The $25 fee for members is the least expensive bid that we found for the level that we seek. And Kiwanis members in the US and Caribbean can enter their personal information and Safe Hire will search federal, state, and local um, county background checks, as well as the sexual offender registry. Uh, Kiwanis members in Canada are asked to contact their local police service to do a vulnerable sector check, local police check, and then submit their original to Kiwanis International so that I can verify it and then update our system and then send it back. For countries outside of the US, Caribbean, and Canada, um, contact me um, at our, our background checks at uh, Kiwanis.org website, and I'll have that posted a little bit later, um, and we'll be able to send you individual background check links so that they can um, work with your local authorities to get uh, the right information for the type of level um, that, that we seek. Um, and we get questions sometimes like, well, the school that I'm working with has asked me to get a background check. Um, but I'm a Kiwanis advisor. The reason why we ask that you get a background check through our system is so that we can check and monitor compliance. We also have our system set up so that um, if when your background check is getting ready to expire, you receive a renewal link about a month before so that you have plenty of time to request that link. So this, um, and we're going to talk about here in just a few minutes about faculty because I see a couple of different um, questions related to faculty. Um, but background checks and beyond. So recently, um, in the last year or so, based on um, best practices, we've updated our policies and procedures and enhancing background checks for chaperones and club advisors. Um, I am a dedicated compliance specialist. Um, I'm working to better communicate, um, track, and monitor the data of our compliance, as well as um, the timeliness of getting those background checks prior to um, expiring. So chaperones. This is a, um, a new policy, uh, or some of the components are a little bit new. But um, as it has been for several years, chaperones must be 21 years old or older. Um, all chaperones, whether they're club members or non-members, um, participating in any single day or overnight service leadership program sponsored event must have a clear background check. So if your <coughs> Kiwanis advisor is there and you actually have a faculty advisor, who, or a faculty staff person who is going to be a chaperone at an overnight program, they will need to have a Kiwanis cleared background check. Um, you must also have completed the Kiwanis International Youth Protection Training, um, follow the policies and procedures. So make sure that the chaperones have a copy of the policies and procedures. That two page document I said you could download from our website. We also have um, the requirement for chaperones that there should be a minimum of one adult or 10 students um, 
during the entirety of the event. Um, this is a, a new change. I just want to make you aware of that. Um, each overnight sponsored youth event must have a minimum of one chaperone per 10 students. And the way this breakdown, breaks down per gender is adult chaperones must include one adult male for each 10 youth males or part of 10. So if that's eight or seven youth males and one adult female for each 10 youth females or part of 10 females. One adult, one female adult for five, six, 10 um, females. If you're over 11, 12, you need to have another adult. Um, adults may not share sleeping quarters with students unless it is um, their child or in a bunkhouse or a camp setting. Overnight events. So all adults, club members and non-members. So this would be club Kiwanis advisors and also faculty advisor members registered or staying overnight at a service leadership program. So this might be next summer when you attend the Key Club International Convention. Um, you must have a criminal history background check cleared from Kiwanis and you must have completed the youth protection training. And also, uh, and what I said is um, you can contact me if we have a list from districts, we can get you set up so that you have um, an email and your login information for that youth protection training. Shouldn't take you very long to complete. Um, there is an exception. Um, if parents or guardians are participating um, of participating students, so my son is a key club member and I'm a parent and I'm not planning on chaperoning, but the convention happens to be in my town and he is going to be um, receiving an award. Um, I may attend the event um, for a maximum of one overnight stay without a criminal background check. So here is another policy update. So single day events without an overnight stay. All Kiwanis advisors, club members and non-members registered for or participating in any service leadership program sponsored event. So this is like a key club um, car wash, um, a key club event or a service leadership sponsored event where there's going to be 50 youth, 20 youth, um, doesn't matter how many, um, there needs to be a clear criminal history background check and also completed the annual training, the youth protection training, um, and all other adults participating in single day events must follow the Kiwanis Youth Protection Policies and Procedures. Um, and I advise that you print off a copy, have it at your event, say you're having a car wash, say you're having a youth bake sale, let the other adults, um, like say you have a, um, a president of your local club who wants to come and volunteer. Make sure that they've received a copy of the youth protection policies and procedures, you know, have it there at your event. Um, and I see that we have some different questions. Um, I tried well, to answer most of the ones in the chat. Okay. Uh, so I can quickly go through that. Um, someone had asked um, if you have a background check, like as a college teacher, or even like you're, you've got your background check through the Scouts, which I had to do last year as well. Um, does that count? And is that, can you use that in this organization? Unfortunately, right now, and I know that there are groups looking at this with legislation, at least here in the United States, there is no federal kind of like repository of background checks where we can go and see if someone is cleared. Um, you know, in Australia, they do um, give folks kind of a, a card, like a membership card that you've been checked and you're allowed to participate in as an adult in youth activities. We don't have that here um, in the United States. And so right now, um, background checks are not transferable um, between organizations and also the quality and depth of the background checks, it's a complete cafeteria menu. You can choose like one county, two years, three counties, five years, and every single county is different in the information they supply. So all of that is to say, you we at Kiwanis have to do our own background checks with an approved vendor. Um, we can't just take someone else's. And I know it's a pain, 
but thankfully they are getting faster and easier and hopefully one day there'll be a uniform one that is volunteers we can use. I personally had to get five background checks last year. Um, so I, I understand where you're coming from. And then someone had asked about the 2019 ICON background checks. When we called that an extended background check, we went from doing a typical six to seven year check to a 10 year check. That didn't mean that that extended the time of the validation of that background check. So it's only valid for the same two years that it's always been. Okay, thank you. And I'm sure there's some questions related to the faculty check, um, the faculty advisors getting background checks. So here are a couple scenarios just to give you um, some policy and practice examples. So scenario one, um, faculty advisor only works with students on school premises for meeting and events. The school background check is sufficient. So you don't need a Kiwanis, um, a background check in this instant. You're, you're meeting on the grounds of the school. Um, advisors should have our youth protection policy um, and adhere to that and adhere to your school standards, um, standards of conduct, whichever policy has the stricter guidance. Um, so scenario two, here we have, how can as an advisor on the date when we need to get our background check renewed, you can email our background checks at kiwanis.org um, email and we can provide that for you. Also, I provide that information to the district level youth protection managers um, on a quarterly basis um, and they can, you can also use them as a resource as well. So, um, for scenario two, faculty advisors who work with students on school premises and attend events outside of the normal school activities, such as overnights with students. Do they need a background check? So effective May 1st of 2020, our new policy is that faculty advisors will be required to have an approved background check through our Kiwanis vendor, uh, Safe Visitor, Safe Hiring Solutions, for any and all overnight stays. They will be required to take our chaperone training via the Presidium and annual, annually review our um, youth protection policies and procedures. Here are a couple more scenarios. So scenario three, if a faculty advisor does not attend an overnight, but they will be acting as an official chaperone for any day events outside of the school property or premise, so for example, if they are going to be an official chaperone at the local farmer's market and they're not on school property or school grounds, that faculty advisor will be required to have an approved background check through our Kiwanis vendor um, for any and all. Um, and they'll be also required to take our chaperone training. Uh, scenario four, if a faculty advisor does not attend an overnight event, but will be attending a day event, not on school property and not in an official chaperone, but as an adult participant. So for example, um, if you already have a, um, a Kiwanis advisor, so you have two Kiwanis advisors and you, um, you want to see a talent show, say the, the Key Club is hosting a talent show and you just want to go and observe, and you're not responsible for any youth at the time of the event, um, then your school background check is sufficient and you don't have to have a Kiwanis um, approved background check. Um, we do ask that you um, adhere to the standards of the school um, and also our youth protection guidelines um, as well. Here is another scenario for back Melissa, can you go back real quick? We just had yep. someone go back, want us to go back to scenario three. So um, faculty advisor does not attend any overnight events, but will be acting as an official chaperone for day events outside of school property and premise. So that's kind of, um, that's that really new piece. So in looking at our policies, uh, we had a complete audit done this past year, um, and it was decided that when our, our key club Kiwanis International Key Club, which we're a pro program of, whenever those Key Club events are off of the school property, including Builders Club, K-Kids, and others, then the faculty advisor serving as the chaperone 
also has to have a, a background check verified by our partner, Safe Hiring Solutions. Um, so this is that new piece. And so for scenario three, that is truly something new that you've seen that went into effect in May. And so um, faculty- and even the, Yeah, and even though um, it says all overnight stays, that was just my, um, my typo that it should have said um, for the day event. So yeah. So what Michelle's trying to say is whether it's overnight or whether it's a day event, if it's not on full property. Right. So if a faculty advisor is acting as a chaperone in our definition of chaperone and they're off of school property, daytime or nighttime, they have to have a background check for these new per these policies. Okay. Thank that you. Helps. Yes, it does. Thank you very much. So here's another scenario. Your key club decon is coming up in just five days and you have 50 chaperones. 45 have cleared and five are pending. What do you do? So the chaperones must pass the Kiwanis International Background Check. I recommend that you give your volunteers a deadline of no less than four weeks to get their background check to ensure adequate time for the background checks. If you're still short on chaperones, you can always work with your district youth project manager. Uh, I'm sorry, youth protection manager. They have their background checks completed. Um, Kiwanis members, CKI students. Um, that are that have their background check um, that are over 21 um, district leaders who all have clear background check as well as um, faculty advisors if they have their background check as well here is another scenario your Kiwanis club is hosting their annual pancake fundraiser so this is your Kiwanis club so the Winchester Kiwanis club is hosting their annual pancake fundraiser and they ask the Winchester High School Key Club students to serve and you gladly say yes as the advisor. Um, true or false, every Kiwanian present must have a cleared background check. What do you think based on what we've said? Could you put your comments? False. Okay, thanks Mike. Mike is correct, false. Uh, the event is not an official youth sponsored Kiwanis event and not all Kiwanians are considered chaperones for this example. Culture. So quick question that someone had about virtual events and I'm typing the answer. Right yes. now we are reviewing the um, our virtual events and what that looks like for uh, chaperones and oversight and all of that. We are working quickly and thoroughly to put together um, a toolkit for the school season because we know virtual that this um, you know time right now is not going to be the only time we have virtual events and so we are working quickly um, but thoroughly to get you the information you need to be successful. I do not think it's going to be a one to ten ratio with everybody background checked. We just can't. Um, there's some things we have been doing as we work with our students like turning off the chat functions and Melissa's done a great job of uh, compiling some best practices there and we'll get that out to everybody. So um, the ABCs, the C in our ABCs of Youth Protection is Culture of Care. Um, so our Culture of Care initiative, this is not a paid initiative. This is, I've had that question before. No, this is just an initiative that not only are we protecting our youth, um, their physical safety, their, their safety from abuse or predators. Um, we also are looking at the culture of care coupled with the commitment of excellence. So the culture um, in the key club and trying to main, trying to build um, healthy um, relationships, healthy boundaries, life skills for um, the future leaders, um, the true leaders that they are in listening and serving in their community and ways that they can um, step up and make effective change um, in their, with their peers or within their community. So our culture of care, what we're talking about is providing resources for adults and youth on positive youth development, uh, resources for parents on positive youth development and protection, um, making parents um, aware, we'll be sharing resources for them about um, the type of language or social media safety practices, um, that type of thing, and positive youth development materials, putting more of those on our website. That, that's forthcoming. 
we did um, in May, Michelle and um, some key club and CKI members um, or leaders actually hosted a mental health Q&A with Anthem's um, Dr. Chowdhury. And that was a great opportunity to hear from an expert um, related to how um, mental health and how it's COVID and how um, being home from school um, can affect the mental health of our, our key club students. Also, as I mentioned before, we have the, um, the helpline. So if there are any safety issues um, that students want to report, they, they can definitely use our helpline um, to report those. Um, we also, so there's a new culture of care um, training happening now. Um, there's actually a four part series. So Burton Patterson, we've been working with the Indiana Coalition um, to end sexual assault and human trafficking. And we plan on working with other coalitions, um, mental health coalitions, and also um, sexual assault prevention, uh, child abuse prevention resources, um, so that we can provide our students as student leaders um, that they have tools and skills in learning effective peer communication, healthy relationships. And again, um, this is more of resources, providing those resources for them to take advantage of. Um, upcoming, so for those of you um, wanted to share that our Youth Protection Awareness Week is coming October 5th through the 9th, and we are um, really going to work hard on compliance and getting all of our um, Quanta advisors background check so that for when I look at that district list, um, everyone, all the districts are at 100% compliance, that their, um, that their advisors are all have background checks and that they've completed their trainings. That is our goal. So if you'd like to reach me and have questions, um, you can contact me at backgroundchecks at kiwanis.org. So any questions related to has my background check expired? I haven't received it, any technical issues? And then any questions that you may have related to the Presidium training, getting your Presidium login, um, you can email at email me at youthprotection at kiwanis.org. Um, we have resources available on our youth protection webpage. Um, we have plans this um, later this summer to make enhancements to that to provide more resources um, for youth protection, mental health. Um, and our culture of care pieces. Um, any questions? So I really appreciate all of you asking the questions. I apologize, I've kept you over. It's an hour and I was only supposed to keep you for 45 minutes. But I appreciate all of your questions. And if anybody has any more questions, any additional questions, um, please ask that. So will we receive a copy of the slides? Yeah. So um, with the form stack registration, what we can do is, um, and by we, I mean Melissa, we can identify all of the advisors. So even if advisors didn't show up for this, we can send those slides out to everybody. And then if you go to the Kiwanis.org website, you can find all of the um, youth protection uh, materials. And so we're going to have, uh, we have some recorded pieces on there already, some different PowerPoints. And then Melissa mentioned it um, a couple of times, but your district youth protection managers, meetings with them, we speak uh, regularly with them and give them additional training and resources. So call on them to come in and do your club training um, to help be an extra resource. So um, I know some of them are pretty eager um, to pitch in and help out. So, you know, use them. And they all have background checks too. So if you need an extra Kiwanis chaperone, they're a good one to call on as well as the um, district risk uh, managers as well. They're all background checked and trained. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you all for your time. I hope that you enjoy um, the rest of your workshops and sessions and joining us on our first virtual um, summer leadership conference. All right. Yeah, so thanks everybody. I also wanna share that we had over 600 students um, out of the about 2000 that logged in over 600 students chose to go through the culture of care uh, workshop. So this means that you've got students who are 
um, by far and away interested in learning more about this topic and how they themselves can be agents of change. And so uh, we're really thrilled about that and thrilled with the adult participation. So we really, really just appreciate that and the enthusiasm for this uh, topic. So thank you. It was the most requested workshop. So you know, anything can happen in 2020. <laughs>